Will Denny Hamlin's Daytona 500 victory save his career from an oncoming Christopher Bell? Will Johnny Sauter rebound from losing his ride at GMS and struggling with Thor Sport? Will Austin Hill curse on the radio again? Will single file racing be the rest of the year in Xfinity? Find out this week and more on Showman the Bowman Show. You are watching a Showman the Bowman production. Okay, so I'm trying like an intro thing. Don't know if it'll even make it into the final video, but what's going on, guys? Showman the Bowman here. We had Daytona. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> what a weekend, what a weekend, what a weekend. Oh, where do I start? I'm pretty happy. I, I'm overall satisfied with the results to an extent. Um, so I'm going to do less of a race review, more of a topic kind of video today. And that topic is, will the Daytona 500 victory save Denny Hamlin's career from Christopher Bell? Short answer, no. <laughs> no, end, end of video. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so I want to get a discussion, or a discussion started about this. I've seen a lot of it recently. A lot of people are like, her der, Denny Hamlin's career's ending. Christopher Bell's going to come in. Her der, der. Well, he just won the Daytona 500, so what does that mean? Um, so... For those of you who are unaware of the situation, Denny Hamlin has a contract year in 2020. We have seen before team owners, especially Joe Gibbs Racing, has bought out the final year on contracts. Um, Casey Kane, for example, at Hendrick Motorsports, he was bought out one year early of his contract to bring in William Byron, which failed utterly. Uh, Daniel Suarez last year was bought out early of his contract to bring in Martin Truex Jr. They were originally going to put him in the 95, but he ended up signing with the 41. So it, we've seen this happen. And a lot of people coming into this year thought Denny Hamlin was going to get bought out and they were bringing Christopher Bell. So here's my take on it. They cannot keep Christopher Bell on Xfinity. If they keep him there another year, he's going to walk. There is no question in my mind, no doubt in my mind, Christopher Bell will walk from Joe Gibbs Racing if they leave him in the Xfinity series. Um, he does not need a third year. He is ready. Um, and I, I don't say that about a lot of drivers. The only driver I really said about that about, and I've been wrong, was Eric Jones. I thought Eric Jones was perfectly fit to come up to Cup when he did. And while he did, had an okay season, he wasn't consistent, wasn't dominant. He wasn't winning races like I thought he would. I thought he would get his, his first win at, like, Texas or something like that and have a solid season. Year two, he's done a lot better. He was a lot con more consistent, got his broke, break, yeah, breakthrough win at Daytona, and he was the most consistent and almost... Would have went to the next round of the playoffs, but he crashed early in Vegas and really no recovering from that in this this point system. Um, William Byron, however, came up after dominating the truck series. I would say semi-dominating the Xfinity series and then coming up to Cup. Now, I think Byron should have gotten another year. And it's it's a hard thing for me to say that and then say Eric Jones is ready. Well, this is where my reasoning lies. Eric Jones was consistently up there every single week fighting for the win in the Xfinity Series. It was clear he was ready for Cup. I mean, he had the Cup experience from the Kenseth incident, and he filled in for Denny Hamlin, I believe, when his he had the neck spasm. Um, so I thought he was ready. William Byron had no Cup experience. No, he wasn't consistently up there. Yeah, he was up there at some tracks, but you put in the Cup guys – in those races, and he was not up there. He wasn't anywhere close. And he wasn't dominating like he did in the Truck Series. The truck Series, he was up there every top three every single week, and he would have won the title had it not been for blowing an engine at Phoenix. Um, if, all under the, if it was under the stage point format, he would have won it. And I thought, you know, I'll give him one more year. He'll probably do a six-win season in Xfinity, bring him up to Cup, and they didn't do that. Now, Christopher Bell... Um, I don't know his exact stats last year, but he was always up front contending for the win. Top five every single race. And he had seven wins, guys. Seven wins, and he was a rookie. Not even that, all right? Go back to, what year was it? 2017. He made a few starts with Joe Gibbs Racing in the Xfinity Series, and he won. Eric Jones did the same thing. And once again, that is why I believe, I believe, honestly, I believe Christopher Bell was ready for Cup this year. And the fact that they left him in Xfinity blows my mind. I thought for sure he was going to the 95, and DiBenedetto was just going to kind of fade off into the sunset. Shocked me a little bit that they signed DiBenedetto. Um, 
And there was a rumor flying around, I don't know if it's still a thing or not, Kamikaze Games shared a thing on Twitter about it, that the 59 was going to be split by Brandon Jones and Christopher Bell. And I don't know if that was just on a like a part-time basis or what. I'm, a, I'm guessing so because it didn't show up at Daytona. Um, so we'll see if that actually ever comes to fruition. But I would not be surprised at all for them to put Christopher Bell in the Cup Series for a couple of races. I wouldn't be surprised if he won one. I mean, obviously, there's going to be that learning curve. The first few, I don't expect him to go out right away and win. But I, w- I expect him to be up there contending in a part-time ride for Levine, depending on how much JGR funding is behind it. Now, this is where I'm going to counter-argue what I said in my predictions video. My predictions video, I said Denny Hamlin would be out, Christopher Bell would be in. I, I tend not to agree with that prediction now. Of course, I did not see him winning the Daytona 500. I don't see him doing anything the rest of the season, though. And... But we'll get back to that. Um, Levine Family Racing can field a second car. It is very, 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 very possible. They could get a charter from one of the teams that inevitably will shut down at the end of the year. I mean, somewhere someone's going to shrink down. I mean, you know it. Whether it be Chip Ganassi Racing getting rid of Kurt or Kurt retiring, and they don't have the funding for Chastain, so they downsize to just 42, and they give the one to Levine. Levine can have another car, so on and so forth. I mean, RCR, if I remember correctly, has a third charter that they've been leasing to someone. I don't know who they were leasing it to. I think it was to Richard Petty. He was, they were leasing it to Richard Petty. Actually, Richard Petty had a second one. I don't know if he sold it or not, though. I'd have to look into that. But I know Richard Petty had a second one, which either way, I mean, what I'm getting at is there, there's a charter somewhere that could be sold to Levine for them to fill the second car next year. And I think that is probably the greatest possibility that will happen. I, I wouldn't be su- the least bit surprised. Um... If they bring the 59, <clears throat> excuse me, bring the 59 back to the Cup Series and run Christopher Bell in it. However, and this is once again kind of a however, if Denny Hamlin doesn't do anything else the rest of the season, he just wins the Daytona 500 and that's it. Like we've seen drivers do before. Austin Dillon 2018, Kurt Busch 2017, really Denny Hamlin 2016. He only broke through and won the final road course and was it Richmond? Yeah, I think it was the final road course in Richmond were the only other wins he had that year. And, I mean, he, other than that, he didn't do anything. He made the round of eight and just kind of flopped. So it does beg the question. I mean, I mean, we've seen crazier things happen, right? We've seen drivers win the title and lose their ride. We've seen drivers finish second in the point standings and their team shuts down. We've seen drivers come off a championship year and their team shuts down. Rusty Wallace, 1990 or 1980-something, if you don't know. Um, so, I don't know. I think it is really a toss-up right now. It's all going to depend on if Denny Hamlin can perform. If he does not perform, I see him out at the end of the season and Christopher Bell in. Now, this is also where things play a different different hand here, all right? Christopher Bell does not have the funding. He has the funding from Ream, but Ream, for those of you who do not know and live under a rock and don't know your NASCAR... Our good old buddy Brandon Jones, his daddy owns Ream. And that's why he's been in a Gibbs car for the last three years. Um, so, <laughs> uh, it's, I don't, and I cannot believe that Ream would come up and sponsor him full time in a cup car without Brandon Jones being there. And that's why I think a lot of the rumor with him going to 59 part time is kind of the whole Ream thing. So this is where I this is where I will play the cards here and say that Denny Hamlin will keep the ride. FedEx they have sponsored Denny Hamlin since 2006 since he started in the Cup Series. They've been on with Joe Gibbs longer than that with Jason Leffler, and um, so so I honestly think wherever Denny ends up, FedEx is going to go. If Denny is not re-signed, if they buy out his contract, FedEx is going to go wherever he goes. Um, and that does raise the question, where would he go? And I thought of that, too. Jomo, please. Chip Ganassi Racing. And I know I said earlier they could sell their charter, but, I mean, let's be real. That's probably not going to happen. So, in this situation, let's say Kurt Busch retires, even though I don't think he will. Kurt Busch retires. Denny Hamlin brings FedEx, goes from the 11 to the 1. And that's what I think could happen. Bring in Christopher Bell to the 11 bring in Brandon Jones to the 40 or the 59 all said and done and that is what I think will happen so thank you guys so much for watching I know it's kind of a 
long ranted video. Not really a race review, um, but I'll give my quick review here. Truck race, 10 out of 10. Xfinity race, 1 out of 10. And cup race, 8.5 8 to 9 out of 10. I was disappointed in the ending. I, you know, most of you guys know I don't like Denny Hamlin. And I'll explain that at why in a later video, and it's not because of the <clears throat> it's not because of the Chase Elliott incident. A lot of people don't hear me say, Oh, I don't like Denny Hamlin. I'm like, oh you gotta get over it. It's Chase Elliott incident. I'm over it, guys. I am over it. I think a lot of you guys have to get over it too. I saw a lot of hate on Twitter. A lot of hate on Twitter. Like leave the poor guy alone, guys. That was a year ago. And I know I, I know coming from a guy who says that he doesn't like him, but well, well, eh, the fan base will get over it eventually. It's just a matter of time. Everyone does. Um, so anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Great race weekend. I'm looking forward to Atlanta for the first time in three years, believe it or not. I'm excited to see what the Aero Package is going to do. But my pick's still Kevin Harvick, and it probably always will be for the foreseeable future till the day Kevin Harvick retires, because he's the king of Atlanta now, like it or not. Uh, I don't know who's even running Xfinity. I don't know who's running trucks, so... Thank you guys so much for watching. Catch you in the next one.